Since the release of Horizon Zero Dawn, there has been one question that has lingered in the back of our minds since we saw the story to completion. The mystery surrounding the event that set Aloy's life in motion and brought about the destruction of the most advanced AI the world has ever known. This being the origin of the unknown transmission that would free Hades and lead to the destruction of Gaia Prime to prevent a second extinction of the human race. Here at the channel, we've discussed various theories as to what may have happened that fateful day. From the Odyssey Project, Rogue AIs, to Lightkeeper clones, we've searched for clues, big and small, trying to explain what happened, and more importantly, why. But with all we've come to know recently concerning Forbidden West, I thought it might just be time to revisit one of our own. A thought that was inspired by a question my wife asked me concerning Zero Dawn's failsafe extinction protocol and how it was supposed to work if it was ever needed. This line of questioning led me down a rabbit hole, eventually finding its way to a scenario that, in my opinion, could offer an answer to the cause of the unknown transmission that led to the events of Horizon. As I stated previously, this theory begins with the question, how was the Hades Protocol supposed to work if the biosphere needed to be reset during Zero Dawn's early terraforming processes? The answer to this lies in the data point Hades Protocol, as well as the speech you can hear delivered by the subfunction's alpha, Travis Tate, within the ZD staging facility beneath Bryce Orbital, or in the 31st century, Sunfall. These two pieces of lore are vitally important to understanding three key points. One, the need for Hades within Project Zero Dawn. Two, what the process of Hades unseating Gaia would look like if it was executed as originally designed. And three, the conditions in which resetting the biosphere would be deemed necessary. Let's begin with why Hades was created in the first place. Zero Dawn took shape, its creators were well aware of the massive undertaking that revitalizing the planet post-Zero Day would pose to Gaia and her subordinate functions. As incredibly impressive and advanced as Gaia was, its creators were well aware that she may need several attempts to correctly terraform the planet to a point where human life could be reintroduced safely. For those failed attempts, Hades would serve as a means to create a clean slate from which Gaia could begin again and correct the mistakes of each previous iteration. However, due to the timeline of Horizon, it would seem that Gaia would exceed expectations and create a habitable world on her first attempt with the first generation of humans released from cradle facilities in the year 2326. Next, let's examine how Hades would begin reverse terraforming operations if it needed to do so. This is perhaps the most intriguing piece of the puzzle. As we learn from the Hades Protocol data point, this process was tumultuous, to say the least. One that required quite a bit of trial and error on the part of Travis Tate in order to find a solution he believed would be suitable for Hades to work as intended. It states the following. Tate here. Just popped three blues, but I earned it. Finally figured out a Goldilocks solution to Gaia's rather extreme executive authority. If that ain't worth 10, 12 hours of dream time, what is? Before this, every usurpation protocol I designed failed in simulation because it was either too hard or too soft. Too hard, and it degraded the Gaia core. Sure, it pried her figurative fingers off the figurative driving wheel so Hades could take control, but by breaking her fingers. Sometimes her arms, too. So that couldn't fly. Everything depends on Gaia taking control back after Hades has done its business, so had to find a solution that didn't leave Gaia any worse for the wear. Too soft, and Gaia only pretended to relinquish control. In simulation after simulation, Hades would take command of the terraforming system and reverse operations, only to have Gaia lurk in the background, quietly re-reversing processes and falsifying telemetry to hide its interference. Sneaky. I swear, ain't nothing Gaia wouldn't do to keep life going, even when it's just simulated plant life. Turns out the just right solution is to isolate Gaia in a protective code shell, preserving its integrity, then unseat it from command position so Hades can slip into the figurative captain's chair and work its magic. Um, those blues are coming on pretty strong now, so I'm not really describing it so clear, but pretty sure it'll work. This is vitally important to understanding that the relationship between Gaia and Hades was quite adversarial and unique amongst her other subfunctions. Where Gaia had executive authority over the others to facilitate needed terraforming processes, in order to operate, Hades was designed to work outside of her jurisdiction. 
Whether this was always the plan or not is unknown, but would be necessary as it became evident that Gaia would do everything in her power to undo any reverse terraforming attempted by Hades, even if a complete reset was objectively needed. Thus, the Hades Usurption Protocol was created. If deemed necessary, Hades would have the ability and authority to unseat Gaia without her permission, isolating her from her subfunctions for her own protection. Then, after completing reverse terraforming procedures over several months, it would relinquish control back to Gaia once more. Now to our third point, concerning the circumstances that would cause Hades to deem a complete reset necessary. Here's what Travis had to say on the subject. Tech smart as Gaia may be, odds are she won't get it right the first time. I mean, imagine your Gaia 200 years from now in this new biosphere you're growing, it's all gone wrong. Alkalines are skyrocketing, coniferous forests eroding under the lash of superstorms that would have drowned Noah. It's chaos, spinning top that won't stop wobbling. Now what are you gonna do? Release phase one organisms into that hot mess? Hope their CO2 and methane can balance out what you got started? Hell no. Under the conditions described, it's evident the global situation would have to be in complete disarray in order for the Hades Usurption Protocol to trigger. Thus, if terraforming was successful, there should be no need for Hades to activate, and should have remained dormant indefinitely. This is important to note because there were only enough zygotes within cradle facilities to repopulate the world once, meaning that once humanity was reintroduced, there would be no second chances. With all this understood, let's examine what transpired during the events of Gaia's dying plea, where Aloy learns what befell the AI along with the fate of the subfunctions. First we see Gaia explain that she received a data transmission of unknown origin. She goes on to explain that its immediate effect was to transform the subfunctions into unregulated, self-aware entities of a highly chaotic nature. Astutely, she then remarks that with Hades awakened, it will seize control and begin reverse terraforming operations. Knowing that a reset would mean the end of humanity, she initiates self-destruct protocols. Finally, before Gaia was able to destroy herself, Hades launched a virus, severing the code shackles that held it, along with the other subfunctions bound to Gaia. After their escape, the Gaia Prime facility detonated, leaving only the ruins of the mountain that fell. So let's break this down. First, we see Gaia lose control of her subordinate functions, each becoming unregulated. Second, when she is no longer in control, Hades attempts to unseat her to fulfill its designated purpose. Separation, followed by usurpation. Though they may be unrelated, this sequence of events seems to mirror the Hades Protocol as described by Tate. If this is indeed the case, then what we may be witnessing during the events of their transmission is the Hades Protocol being initiated and working as intended. Unfortunately, the timing is less than opportune, as humanity's future was at stake once again. As it's described by Gaia, this event represents an unforeseen and catastrophic anomaly, a deviation from everything that she herself created and could have predicted, one that forced her hand, bringing about her own demise. Sensing Gaia's course of action, Hades launched a virus to sever ties for itself and its fellow subfunctions in order to avoid their own destruction, an interesting development, perhaps demonstrating another example of Hades' ability to function beyond Gaia's control. As with all theories, there are questions and counterpoints that often follow. Before we continue, I'd like to address some common points that have been brought to my attention concerning the thought that the activation of the Hades Protocol is synonymous with the transmission that occurs during Gaia's dying plea. 1. Shouldn't Gaia have the capability within the system to automatically shut Hades down permanently once the re-terraforming was successful? Possibly but there's no concrete evidence in the lore to support this assumption. Keep in mind, due to her track record with Hades, giving Gaia any real control over its systems may not have been a realistic possibility. Knowing that time and time again she would do anything in her power to stop any reverse terraforming. Before the signal, Hades may well have been left dormant only due to the fact that the planet was habitable once more, having no need to activate rather than an executive action by Gaia. Again, the only definitive piece of lore concerning the two's relationship we do have tells us that Hades is, by design, supposed to function outside the AI's executive authority, 
The fact that Hades was able to sever itself from the system as a whole may be yet another example of its ability to work outside the purview of Gaia. In summary, not only is there no evidence to Gaia having the ability to shut Hades down, but lore actually points to the opposite being true. 2. The transmission couldn't be a byproduct of Zero Dawn design because Gaia had absolute authority over the entire system, the system deemed to be functionally complete, meaning the signal had to have come from an external source. This assumption unfortunately overestimates the true power of Gaia over ZD systems. Though she does indeed wield immense influence over ZD, the system was designed with checks and balances in mind so her powers wouldn't be absolute and even lessened if all had gone according to plan. In addition to the points made previously concerning Hades, the lore tells us that Gaia was not intended to have sole control over the functionality of another one of her subfunctions as well, that being Artemis. If Apollo had never been purged, having a populace who was educated and aware of the terraforming systems, control of Artemis was intended to eventually be granted to the human populace rather than remain with Gaia. With Apollo's purge, there's no knowing at this time what other systems may have been intended to be passed on to the human population, perhaps even extending to Hades. Beyond this, by Gaia's own admission and input, she tells us her authority over ZD systems purposefully had limitations. High-level directives barred her from interacting with the tribal inhabitants of the 31st century. A hardwired override was put in place during her creation specifically to ensure humans would always have the ultimate leverage in case Gaia ever went rogue. No one knew more than Gaia, created in the wake of the Pharaoh Plague, that humanity could never put their fate without recourse in the hands of technology beyond their control again. 3. Being that the subfunctions became unregulated and self-aware, Hades would not be able to utilize them to reverse terraforming operations, and Hades would need to control the other subfunctions in order to complete reverse terraforming, proving the transmission could not have been the Hades Protocol. Well, if this were indeed the case, Gaia would have no need to destroy herself, since Hades wouldn't have been able to fulfill its reverse terraforming capabilities by harnessing the abilities of its fellow subfunctions. Being that Gaia felt it necessary to destroy herself to prevent Hades from seizing control, it would seem Hades was more than capable of fulfilling its extinction mandate if Gaia hadn't resorted to such extreme measures to stop it. 4. Gaia's terraforming was successful. We know this because human repopulation has occurred, which would not have been authorized until all terraforming requirements were successfully met, so there is no reason the Hades Protocol should initiate under these conditions. It does appear that Gaia has been able to create a habitable world once more, apparently making Hades obsolete within ZD, not due to any authority by Gaia over Hades, but because her success meant Hades should never need to activate. This point in particular posed the most opposition to this theory for sure. Before, I thought there might be an unforeseen bug in ZD systems, since the Alphas were murdered before they were able to refine and perfect their work within Gaia Prime, a task that was expected to be carried out over the rest of their natural lives. But, with the knowledge gained from what we've seen in Forbidden West, let's remember what manner of circumstances would initiate the Hades Protocol. By Travis Tate's own testimony, the examples he presents are alkaline skyrocketing and superstorms of biblical proportions. Well, in the words of Aloy, the storm is coming. Foreshadowing that has been planted since HZD's E3 trailer in 2015, and echoed once more in their latest state of play focused on Forbidden West in 2021. What some may have not expected is just how literally that phrase should have been taken. As we've now confirmed from the devs, Forbidden West begins only six months after the events of HZD. Supercell storms on land and sea are actively devastating the planet due to what has been described to us as a collapsing biosphere. And once again, in the words of Travis concerning when Hades should step in and what should be done, What you're gonna do, Gaia, is step aside while Hades takes over and does what you're just too darn nurturing and life-loving to do, which is burn that misbegotten mess of a biosphere to the ground so Gaia can start over. Whatever systems that were designed to inform Hades that a complete collapse of the biosphere was imminent, it seems safe to say that if it was still operational, a collapsing biosphere causing supercell storms would qualify an attempt to unseat Gaia and initiate a reset on a global level. 
With the transmission arriving nearly two decades before Aloy's birth, this means whatever caused the data to be sent to Gaia Prime has been brewing for quite a while, and this indeed seems to be the case. According to observer log USW10, recorded by the fallen Talnek in the Frozen Wilds, supercell formations had begun being detected before the events of the unknown transmission, as the machine was corresponding and receiving commands from Gaia Prime before the storm damaged it so severely it was no longer able to function. Unfortunately, by the time Forbidden West begins, it would appear the world is once again in dire straits, with early preventative measures no longer an option. If the transmission that brought about the end of Gaia was indeed the Hades Protocol activating from the coming collapse of the biosphere, it would also add continuity from the first to the second game in a narrative sense. Although Aloy did prevent Hades from fulfilling its extinction protocol, the underlying reason for its activation would still remain unresolved. Another global threat that isn't a random plot device, but one that is connected to pivotal events from the story of Zero Dawn. Additionally, this course of action for anyone or anything wishing to exterminate all life once more is rather elegant in its simplicity. Rather than attempt to outsmart the most highly advanced AI ever created whose dominion stretches across the globe, simply create a scenario that would trigger its own system to achieve extinction on demand. What that force creating such devastation could be, however, is a thought best left for another one of our videos. One final point that has been often stated as evidence to something more external triggering the events of the transmission is the post credit scene shared by Hades, whose memory has been downloaded into a portable storage unit, and Silence, the infamous line concerning the Masters. We've still so much to discuss, so much you never revealed. Your masters, for example, the ones who sent the signal that woke you. Knowledge has its rewards, don't you think? Foreboding, to be sure, and a line that leaves the door open for nefarious forces beyond the realm of Hades, the Zero Dawn systems. The cutscene ends soon after, offering us little more to go off of. However, within the Collector's Edition Game Guide of HCD, page 653, there is a small section dedicated to this scene. What it has to say offers additional context to what's transpiring, while also adding a different perspective as to the meaning behind Silent's words. It states the following. The lance serves its final purpose, just as intended, leaving Hades imprisoned in Silent's clutches. Satisfied with his prize, Silent demands that Hades reveal all it knows about those who created it. Interesting, to say the least implying in this context that the Master's Silence may be referring to are connected to the sub-function's creators, those being Alpha, Beta, and Gamma-level members of Project Zero Dawn, most notably Travis Tate. So, let's review. In Aloy's present day, we know the planet is facing a collapsing biosphere, with evidence indicating initial signs of such a catastrophe being detected before the events of the Unknown Transmission, a scenario which by design was severe enough that Hades was meant to step in. We see a data transmission arrive in Gaia Prime, not described as a virus or a malicious code, as we see those distinctions made later in Gaia's dying plea and during the events of the hostile takeover of the AI Cyan, wording that leaves the true nature of the signal rather ambiguous. We then see Gaia separated from her subordinate functions, followed by Hades moving in to assume control of ZD systems. Motive, means, and actions that all seem to follow what has been described to us by Travis Tate as his Goldilocks solution to ensure Hades can do its job, in spite of Gaia's repeated and well-documented attempts to thwart it. Could this be the answer to the nature of the unknown transmission? We'll only know for sure when Aloy can uncover that mystery for herself. But I can't help but feel these specific clues have been left for us to find for a reason. Those who are crafting the world of the game, hoping we can connect the dots to reveal a greater picture than what we were meant to see on the surface level of Zero Dawn. Regardless of this theory ending up being true, this is what makes Horizon so special. Deep history, powerful moments, and tantalizing mysteries keeping us just out of reach of the answers we so desperately want. But as I find myself saying quite a lot these days, we'll just have to be patient and hope the answers await us in the next chapter of Aloy's Journey.
And that brings our journey to a close. If you'd like to see more content like this, likes and shares are always appreciated. And if you're hungry for more Horizon lore, be sure to subscribe and check out the rest of our content here at the channel. Also, consider supporting us on Patreon to help us create more quality content just like this. Check out the link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching, and keep questing.